So the Miami Dolphins selected Austin Jackson uh, early on in the first round. Not early on in the first round, but earlier than expected for him to go. So I think a lot of people were saying, okay, it's a bit of a reach. But at the same time, you know, it is kind of worth it to get a good tackle in the first round. And I do believe he's a good tackle, you know. I mean, I think it's rare that a tackle of his talent ends up being the fifth tackle selected. But it's rare that there's just four really, you know, high quality tackles in a single draft so I do think that he is a tier below those top four guys but I still think he's very good and I think he definitely I I, kind of like this pick a lot actually from the Miami Dolphins perspective like let's start things off with this play where he's going to be going up one-on-one against a Utah player right over there that's what's going to happen and really what I want to talk about is sort of his lateral movement first to his left he's a left tackle so when he moves to his left that's closer to the outside and watch how his assigned man's going to kind of fake as though he's running right at Jackson, but then he is going to rush towards the outside. That's the way this is going to work. So he starts off like that, is going to sidestep over to the outside. He's going to try to get his right arm kind of on Jackson's left arm, move over that way. But for Jackson, notice how he just easily steps over to the side, and there's just nothing you can do there for Utah. I mean, that you're just not going to be able to be able to win that matchup. So, you know, that's really one thing I do like about him is moving to that side, he does a very good job of getting over there. Uh, he can definitely make sure that he creates some pressure, but sometimes he does it a bit too much. Sometimes he goes a bit too far over there too quickly, and that can result in him getting beat with spin moves. Uh, this is a good example of that, where he's going up one-on-one against that Utah player, and so he's going to once again just start off instantly sidestepping towards that direction. But when he does that, look at this spin move, and it results in some pressure right away. The ball was thrown pretty immediately, so didn't matter but you know there was definitely pressure and if the quarterback was holding on to the ball for a typical amount of time then that could have even been a sack so a little bit of a lucky break there for from Jackson but at the same time it's worth taking a look at those types of plays and that's kind of why you can't just totally step over like that you do have to kind of read what the defensive lineman is doing you have to be potentially aware of something like that so you know he does do a good job at getting over there but at the same time He also kind of has to be a little bit more careful. He can't just get over there in an instance because if he does, that, you know, that results in plays like that happening. Uh, This is another interesting play. Uh, What I like about this play is it'll kind of just show that, you know, it's not just his feet footwork that I think is important when talking about Jackson. I also think it's important to talk about just how quick uh, his hands. I think hands are very important in an offensive lineman, and he has great hands. He really does. Uh, His hands are definitely yet another thing that I do like about him, and this is what's going to happen. So he's going up one-on-one against that Utah player, and right after the ball is snapped, it's very similar where, you know, he kind of just tries to fake a little bit like he's going to the inside, then goes to the outside. Doesn't really work out too well. Jackson is kind of right on it, and, you know, as I said, when he has to move to the outside, he is very good. When he has to move to the inside, he's less good, but definitely very good at moving to the outside, and, you know, that's a, a very important part of the tackle position is getting over to the outside and that's something that he can do so definitely very good but what I also like here is his hands and notice how he has his left arm basically number six is trying to get his right arm and knock the left arm out of the way that's how you get to the outside is you knock the left arm out of the way and then get to his left that's kind of how that works uh but with his left arm it's totally staying strong it's you know it's like a wall right there you can't really get around it and that basically means that there's no pressure Jackson is able to hold his ground until uh, the USC quarterback is able to finally find someone to throw the ball to. So, you know, little things like that, I mean, it's it really does come down to the little things. This guy has talent. He has talent for sure. Not as polished as some of these other tackles, but the talent is there, the strength is there, and I do think that, uh, you know, just the fact that you're going out and you're getting somebody who has just a bunch of raw talent, I think makes a lot of sense, especially when you are kind of in a rebuild situation and it looks to me like that's kind of uh, what the Dolphins are going to do is they're going to rebuild I think that there could even be some logic behind let's have Fitzpatrick still at least start next season and kind of just let Tua wash for a little bit but also let the offensive line sort of you know get a little bit better I think Jackson is I mean he's a young guy he's 20 years old so uh, definitely giving him a year at the NFL level could help him get up to speed and then you can have two a play, and he won't be, you know, running for his life out there. I mean, he. This is a a six six, three hundred and twenty two pound guy who can move very well. So 
definitely there's a lot of value in getting him on your team. And for an 18th pick, if you can get a starting left tackle, that's totally solid value. Um, one thing that I've noticed that he does a lot is he's pretty much very okay with you beating him to the outside. I know I said that he's good at getting there, but what my point is that sometimes you just try to run a bit to the left and try to you know create the contact, get the left arm around, and get through that way. Sometimes you just try to totally go around. This is like what D4 does a lot, where you just completely run around and try to use speed to your advantage. That's what that UCLA player that Jackson is going up against is going to do. He's going to just try to get to the outside. That's his main goal here. And watch how, you know, he does get to the outside. He doesn't create much contact right at the beginning. He has a lot of room to go now, though. You know, he's far over. So he's going to have to really try to move in to get to the quarterback right here. So it's it's a tough, you know, that's the, that's the pro and the con about it. The pro, obviously, is that you don't have that much contact. The con is that, you know, you're going to just have more to more room to run, basically. Uh, but what I really like about this play from Jackson is watch how calm he is and really watch where he's standing right now. A lot of guys would just try to get too far over and, you know, try to push at this point. But you don't want to do that because if you run too far, well, then, you know, again, a spin move can happen, which could allow a straight shot to the quarterback. Uh, so Jackson's kind of playing this right here where he's just going to hang out where he's at and basically just at the last second push him away, which, you know, that has its pros and cons as well. On this play, it worked out very well. It could end up being a bad thing, though, really, basically, if the quarterback takes too many steps back on his drop, which does happen from time to time, that can result in a quarterback just getting completely creamed. So if you are going to be a little bit more patient like this, you really do have to be sure of what you're doing, and that's kind of why it can be very important to potentially, you know, not have Tua there, so that way you don't have to worry too much about uh, him getting creamed like that, because if Fitzpatrick's there, obviously you don't want him to get hurt either, but it, there is a bit less pressure when you have a veteran journeyman quarterback there, as opposed to the guy who's supposed to be the next savior of your franchise, so uh, I, I do think there is some logic in keeping Tua, uh, you know, having him sit out a year, but again, or at least part of the year, just, you know, get Jackson sort of up to speed on your whole offense, figure out how you want to use him, especially with potentially uh, you might not have a, as much of a training camp as you usually do. So another factor there, uh, but again, we'll have to wait and see. There's logic to both sides, but let's just show one more play. I want to show a running play now because I've showed passing. Obviously, that's what you think about when you think about a tackle is how can you pass protect, but he can run block as well. This is an example where he's going up against that UCLA player, some one-on-one -on -one matchup, and basically his job is to try to get that UCLA player closest to the sideline as possible. He wants to get him, you know, it's going to be a run to the inside of the tackle, obviously, so he wants to just get him out of that direction. And what he's going to do is he's going to kind of just use his left arm, but not really push off in that direction. He's going to make it seem like that's what he's going to do, but sort of allow the UCLA player to try to break in that area. Watch how that's what he does. And now at this point, I mean, there's nothing you can do if you're a UCLA defender. I mean, you're not even facing the right direction. And right now, Jackson is just in perfect position to where he can make this block. He's able to completely finish off the block and allows for a solid run. Uh, that's just kind of, again, another thing that Jackson does well. He's a good run blocker. I would, I would say a very good run blocker for a tackle. And I do think he's a good pass protector. Again, a couple of maybe young player things he might need to work on, or at least just, you know, get on the same page of his coach and everything. He's definitely a very young guy. So I think that he's maybe not the most NFL ready out of the tackles that were drafted, but, but he's definitely good. I mean, he checks off all the boxes. It seems like he's going to be a solid tackle maybe maybe not the elite tackle but you know what listen the the 18th overall pick for a very good tackle in my opinion is worth it uh it, it felt like a little bit of a reach at the time but honestly I'm, I'm not mad at it at all uh I think I said on my podcast that I'm pretty much never gonna be mad at somebody for drafting offensive line it's pretty much always the right move you know few exceptions here and there but for the most part you do have to work on the line so it does make some sense to make sure that you are paying some attention to it. At least that's what I think. I think Jackson can definitely go a long way, especially when you just drafted your potential franchise quarterback. You want to make sure you can protect him, and I do think that Jackson is someone who can help protect Tua or Fitzpatrick. If not immediately, at least you know six games into the season, he should be pretty good. That's just what I think. Uh, seems like probably once or twice a season he will allow a clean shot to the quarterback, but 
for the most part, he's not going to allow too many hits, which is obviously the important thing. So, yeah, that's what I think. Let me know. What do you guys think? What do you think of this decision to go out and draft Austin Jackson? I find it very fascinating. Let me know what you guys think. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.